in the opening of that report, it talks about climate change being the one thing that could prevent us reaching our objectives. We are here in the Asia-Pacific region, which is the, the most affected in the world by natural disasters. Your comments on climate change, just quickly. Well, it is a huge threat to development. And uh, if you go back about five years, UNDP's Human Development Report was on climate change. And it projected that if there wasn't decisive action uh, to tackle climate change, the poorest 40% of the world's population uh, would be very adversely affected, probably go backwards. We did another human development report two years ago uh, on the poverty environment uh, link. And again, if, if you sort of project out um, various scenarios, the worst case scenario uh, would show environmental degradation, uh, not only stopping forward movement on human development, but actually throwing it into reverse in parts of South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. So these are very, very big issues. But I'd also go beyond climate change to make the following point, that if you look at the, the, the face of extreme poverty, uh, the large emerging economies uh, are making not too bad a fist of dealing with it. You look at Brazil's family cash transfer schemes, done a tremendous amount to drag people out of poverty. Uh, China has lifted you know, hundreds of millions of people out of poverty. At, I might say you know, the development model is also one that is very challenging for the environment, which China itself recognises. And I remember my last visit to China as Prime Minister, what did Premier Wen put on the table in the discussions? You know, what can you do to help us to get a better balance with the environment? He said the same to Kevin Rudd the week later. I mean, they need the environmental technologies and approaches that are going to to make a different difference there. So, you know, India, the way India is emerging, it will deal with extreme poverty. But uh, the geography of extreme poverty then comes, narrows down to the group of fragile states which are still mired in war and conflict with people particularly exposed to natural disaster, the weak states, the poor governance. Uh, all of this adds up to fragility. And, to uh, eradicate extreme poverty, you do have to eradicate it in Somalia and the Central African Republic and Afghanistan uh, and the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo and, and quite a long list of, of, of countries which are very fragile. So we need to be thinking about the interplay between conflict and development, disaster and, and development, weak states and development, poor governance and development, human rights and development. Rule of law and development. These things are not irrelevant. Now, you know, can the international community deal with this in the development agenda? Because it's, it's very easy to get agreement that we should eradicate poverty. Every child should be in school. You know, children shouldn't die unnecessarily. Women shouldn't die in childbirth or pregnancy. But we'll be able to get agreement about the critical importance of <laughs> tackling corruption, the absence of human rights, the rule of law, and other things. This is challenging. It's very challenging, but these are drivers of progress.